Hey everybody, this is Brian Ash for our first episode of 2022 of What with Rep Assets. Well, how about that? We started our first one back in 2020 on location, and sadly since then everything was uh, remote so uh, via Zoom. So we're thrilled to be back here, and I'm very excited for our first one in 2022 here at the Longmeadow Adult Center. So we're going to go inside, take a tour of the facility, uh, meet some people there, and find out more about this place. So thank you. Let's go. Hello, welcome, and our first well, welcome, person, how are you, Mary Welcome, welcome to the Longmeadow Adult Center. Thank you very much. Mary Beth Bergeron, we're going to be touring the building with. Yes, we are. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about right here? Sure. Well, this is the main entry to the building, obviously. Uh, behind us is what I call the concierge area. Where very fancy each, word. It is a con fancy word. <laughs> it's a fancy place. <laughs> Um, where people come in, they sign in, they might get a bulletin, they might ask a question, uh, they might uh, uh, borrow the pickleball uh, paddles and balls, etc. We'll have to show that court later we'll, on. We'll be showing that court later on, right. for sure. And then um, over here is the cafe, and this is uh, an area where people can get a cup of coffee or a Danish or whatever in the morning, or in the afternoon maybe meet with friends. Um, it's kind of a quiet area for the center, uh, but it is definitely usually you'll find people here, um, right. you know, meeting with friends or maybe waiting for a program to start or yeah. whatever, Brian. Um, before we go much further, though, sure. I would be remiss if I didn't thank you oh, for your help in getting uh, us a grant for the um, generator and for the handicap accessible van, my pleasure. which we're hoping once now that the weather is clearing up a little bit, we'll be able to start uh, planning some trips. Um, now that you mentioned... Um how did funding come about for this? Well, the funding came primarily from uh, two locations, and primarily, I must say, to, from the residents of the town and their vote at the town meeting um, three years ago. That's where the primary funding came. Uh, that was a long time in coming, uh, but we did get approval, and then the subsequent vote at uh, uh, the election. Let me ask this, before we get a tour of the building, how long did something like this take from the concept of it mm. to when we actually open the doors. From the fledgling idea of, and, and recognizing and had been recognized for a while, that the community needed a new adult center, that the facility that was there that had been used had been built and designed as a, as a uh, school uh, for K through fifth graders. The building really wasn't um, what the community needed on a lot of different levels. It wasn't fully handicap accessible. Um, some of the rooms were small, there weren't enough rooms, um, it was tired. When you walked in the door, you felt like you were walking into a nursing home. The entrance was not warm and inviting like this entrance is. So it, about eight years it took yeah. from the fledgling idea to standing here today. And the reason I brought that up because it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of people yes. that don't give up either because it would have been easy to quit yes. along the road. I mean. I know there were other sites that were looked at, didn't go oh, through, yes. so right, right. as well as competing with other, you know, the Needs DPW, the we just got a yes. high school, so yes. I, I really commend you and others that work w yes. uh, with you to yes. stay with this and stay yes. diligent because it's an absolute beautiful and much needed, as you yeah. mentioned. Oh, it definitely was much needed, as is evidence now with the robust use of this facility. Right. Uh, you know, we had a hard time starting just because the people coming in and out, so. We, that's a good yeah. thing. That is, ro and that, that is so rewarding um, to everyone who was involved uh, to the, in the campaign to get it in the construction with the building committee, it, it is just so rewarding to see it have such robust use Great. by a variety of different people. Right. All, all, uh, all ages, you know, 55 and up, it's, it's been great. And now that they're open in the evenings, um, right. the facility's open in the evenings till 8 o'clock, there's even more use. Well, that's great. Why don't we uh, yes. start off? Show okay. me around your new okay. place. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do, um, because it is a, it, they are core programs of the facility, is take you into what I call the social service wing of uh, the center. In here, we have the veterans agent office, um, the, this, the nurse, uh, the town nurse, and in here is the food pantry, all core services of the town and or the adult center. Now I noticed under them there's gifts of, uh, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, <coughs> it, it was became evident um, once we started designing the building and after we got approval 
that we really should form a nonprofit. And so uh, today, I'm the president of the Longmeadow Adult Community Center Fund, which was a fund started to uh, fund the enha construction enhancements primarily, uh, quality furniture, you know, again, for sustainability, um, upgraded uh, wainscoting um, in, throughout the building. Um, I could go, we funded additional pickleball courts for the fitness needs of the community um, at large, and that's all ages, the outside courts, it's all ages can use that facility. So, you know, the list is pretty long. Um, we had incredible support from the community, as is evidenced by plaques throughout the building. Um, there's large plaques and then there's smaller plaques. So, for example, the Veterans Office, and this is actually pretty nice because uh, James and Robert Russell were the first donors to the building. Oh, that's they, great. They were the very first people I was able to get a significant donation from. Um, so it was, it's very rewarding that their yeah, names be great family. highlighted yeah. twice. Very great family, yes. Yeah, and they have been strong supporters of the veterans agent <coughs> and department for years, before the building even. And that is nice that we have our dedicated veterans agent right yes, here. Yes, right. And it's, there's a private entrance, yep. so, you know, if someone wanted to, when they come and pick up from the food bank, they're not exposed to, and everyone in the building doesn't know that they're getting groceries right. from the food bank. And obviously with COVID, um, the department really had seen a huge increase. And now today, with the price increases for groceries, you know, it's having even more use. There's, there's more need in this community than most people realize. Right. Yes. Yep. All right, great. Well, okay, thank you. Let's, so let's uh, move keep along. Keep on moving. Thanks. In the administration <laughs> wing over here, we have the director um, of the Department of the Council on Aging. We also have an assistant director, Lindsay Gill, whose primary function is events, programming and events, uh, uh, arranging them, etc., and setting up the schedule. This building would not have the robust use without um, having this assistant director. She does an incredible job um, with, with setting different um, programs up, whether it's music or lectures. Um, the, the offerings here at the center have grown significantly since we've opened. Um, and obviously, the usage has grown significantly right. as well. Which is good. Yep. Um, we have the outreach coordinator. The outreach coordinator, again, is a social service, and she contacts people who are um, at risk at home, um, elders who are at risk at home. She also sets up the volunteers who, without whom this building would not operate without the volunteers, whether it's um, in the kitchen serving food, the meals, or here at the cafe, uh, she does an outstanding job. But her primary function is really outreach to elders at home, homebound people. Uh, and she also does a great job. So, And then there's room back here for some volunteers if they need a desk to, to assist with some program or whatever. Yeah. Mary Beth, before we move on, sure. there's artwork throughout the building. Yes. Where, where did that come from? How did that yes. come about? Well, that's interesting because um, when the walls started going up, it was evident that um, there was a lot of bare walls. There were going to be a lot of bare walls. And the nonprofit, the Longmeadow Adult Community Center Fund, decided that we would um, purchase artwork for the walls and then ask people to sponsor it. Um, so that although we bought the artwork, we have, as you can see, many plaques. So for example, this particular, these two particular uh, drawings were sponsored by Saul Feinstone, a well-known member in our community. Very well-known. Yes, yes. Oddly enough, one of the other things that we did was we really tried to get diverse and local artists. So this particular, these particular drawings um, were done by a high school student in East Longmeadow and who has done a lot of artwork, also happens to be my granddaughter. Ah, incredible. <laughs> and we had them framed. Over, you know, over here we have a piece by um, Sinitra Vishwatha. She's from Westfield. So we try, really wow. tried to support local artists as much as we possibly could. That's great. Yep. We also tried to diversify the type of art. So we have oil painting, we have watercolors, we have etchings, we have ceramics, we have sculptures. Um, it, the list kind of goes on and on. If, if fabric art. So we really tried to have breadth and depth of uh, of talent and types uh, and media of artwork. Great. Yep. What do we have okay, next? Okay. I just okay. 
Well, obviously, I just wanted to point out that you know there's a lot of facilities. This is uh, the bathrooms um, here um, on both sides. Over here is probably one of the biggest used rooms in the building, the multi-purpose room, gift of the Davis Foundation. Um, every day, our kitchen staff serves lunch to anywhere from 40 to 50 people. There are some times that it's actually full house, like for example, next week was, uh, or this week actually, ah, with St. Patrick, Patrick's yeah. Day, yes. They're serving corned beef, and you can imagine there is a waiting list. I just heard the waiting list is 17 people to wow. get in to have corned beef at lunch on, th on Thursday. So yeah, this, so this multi-purpose room gets a lot, there's lectures, a lot of musical performances in here. I think occasionally there's some fitness performances in here. So this room has a lot of use. Now much bigger, much uh, oh, yeah. more useful yes. than the past room oh, in the, yes, definitely. across the way. There's also a stage. Um, the curtains are drawn right now, but the stage actually has sliding glass doors that, so that the performance can be both outside and inside. It's also ADA compliant. You see the lift there to the left. That's great. Yep. Now, about the gold cane here. This is uh, a oh, historic yeah, the golden thing. Cane. It is a historic cane. So we moved that over from the old center. Um, and this is uh, given to the oldest resident in town once we can identify them. <laughs> Now this has a history too. The Boston Globe, I think, gave this to all 351 cities and towns years and years and years ago. Yes. And most towns have since lost theirs or somebody kept them in a family. So it's, it's really incredible to still have the cane and to still be able to, right. know, as soon as we find the, the oldest resident in town. we got to find the oldest resident in town it's, for it's this kind of year. a neat tradition. Uh, it is neat a neat tradition. thing. Yes, yeah. So we actually had this made because it had been built in over at the old center. Ah, so we had the case made for, that's beautiful. for the... And it uh, should be on display for yes, everybody. That's absolutely. great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, where are we going from oh, here? Okay, from here. I don't know as we really need to see the commercial yeah. kitchen, but there's a great kitchen back there, all brand new equipment, all brand new if dishes. If they had the corned beef ready, maybe we would. Oh, we could have now. the corned beef for <laughs> sure, right. Uh, and this is just a sitting area, again, where people can come and just wait for their friends to come or whatever. More beautiful artwork. You know, yes, we have a sculpture by Andrew DeVry, who is, uh, uh, he uses the lost brass, uh, brass, brass method of casting, um, and she is called Fairy Dance. I'm originally commissioned by a woman who is very sick and who said if she could survive this cancer that she had, she would commission a piece. And so this is, and, and to, to um, show her joy at living and to oh. remind people it's now time to dance. That is incredible. Yes. I didn't know that story. That's good. What do we have right here? What well, this is an interesting <laughs> architectural feature. Um, this is actually skylights up there, and it, li it helps light the second floor, and then the light comes down here. One of the... Uh, shortfalls of being older, you often are not outside enough and don't get enough sunshine, uh, which is obviously very good for you. And so this brings the natural light down to the, not only the second floor, but down to the first floor. And there are two of these in the building. I thought they were old hampers. We had no, they're not clothes. hampers, no. <laughs> not I knew hampers. I shouldn't have thrown my last time I was in <laughs> not here. Not hampers at all. Hey, George, how are you? Good. Living the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> Okay, do you want to go up or um, whichever? No, oh, no, let's go down this right. way, yes. Please. So you'll oftentimes see, well, again, we'll talk about the plaques. These are yep. a number of the donors who donated, and thank you, Brian, for your donation. Wow, my pleasure. Um, to the building. We have a fireplace here. Most of the time you will find some, this is a quiet, the quietest area of the building. You'll find someone sitting here reading maybe waiting for friends. On the other side, you'll find people playing chess. I feel like I could do my Teddy Roosevelt show from right you here. You could do <laughs> that. Yes, you could. And the fireplace goes on both sides. It's a oh, library. Um, so you'll see people playing games. Uh, down here, they play uh, pickleball. They'll play mahjong. Um, you know, the, again, usually that's when there's an overflow from the game room upstairs. Okay. So coming along here, come on in. This is the, I hate to show this next, but because it's the frosting on the cake. This is um, the gymnasium. Usually you'll find all three courts being used at the same time. Right now they're playing pickleball. However, the, the, it is designed to use, it's a basketball court, so people can play pickleball, basketball, volleyball, 
and ping pong. And it is always in use. Even at night, you'll find people here all the time. Usually Upstairs, at night, Mary Beth and I have some five on five games oh, sure, going on. Sure. <laughs> Upstairs, you'll see the walking track. And there are always people on this walking track. Um, 15 laps around makes one mile. <laughs> we have uh, all kinds of fitness, other activities that take place in here. There's line dancing. Wow. Yeah, it's what a great addition this was, too, because obviously you didn't have the space over there. Right, right. I mean, and right, right. weather-wise, you never know when it's going to be nice enough exactly. to be outside. So this is phenomenal. And outside courts as well yeah, for yeah, pickleball. Yeah, exactly. There's four outside courts, three inside courts. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that we identified early on when this was a, as I said before, a fledgling idea is that people were really looking for fitness opportunities, which we could not provide at the other center. Um, once we put these fitness facilities in, and you'll see upstairs there's also an exercise fitness room, um, in incredible growth of attendance at the building because most people 55 to 80, they are looking for opportunities to play, to be physically active, right. and this provides that to them. Um, although you can't run on this track, it is, you could run on the track, but we don't allow it. It's a walking track only. Yep. In the winter, in the, the, during the winter months, it's not uncommon at all to come over here and find 10, 12, 15 people walking the track. Wow. It's, it's been a great addition to, and enhancing the health, I think, of the people in this community. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, let's right, go up thanks. the grand staircase now. Excellent. Thank so you. this is what I call the Grand Staircase. And you can see that uh, there's an upgraded uh, a railing system, these, these insets here. Um, again, we're, we were trying to make the building really be beautiful. And, and obviously, the stairs are all cherry. Come Very on up. Nice. This is what I call the Brugge Gallery. Again, if you're, if you're tired after coming up a half a flight of stairs, you can sit here and take a rest and enjoy some beautiful um, artwork that was donated, actually, by the uh, Doug and Dave Brega. Their mother, Ellie Brega, had been a real force in town in the real estate business. And so they wanted to memorialize her with this particular gallery of paintings by them because she and her husband had supported their art career when it was not as successful as it is today. Very nice. So here we have um, another area where guys meet, chat about guys. something. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Good <laughs> Seinfeld think, reference. That is one of the interesting things about this new facility. Typically, adult centers see a ratio of uh, significant um, numbers of females at adult centers. In this facility, I would say it's close to even. Men are okay. definitely participating, whether it's this type of uh, activity or here we have the fitness room. And this is a good place to come in also. So back here we have Pam, who's giving lessons on how to use the equipment. And uh, this is open to those people who purchase a membership, actually. You do have to buy a membership to use this. But as you can see, we got a lot of guys here. Yeah. Yep. This is nice, and yes. uh, again, more room, yep. cleaner, more yep. equipment than. Yep. All I've brand ever new, and this equipment is designed for older people. Okay. For usage by older people, it is all ADA compliant. So, if someone's in a wheelchair, they can get on any of these pieces of equipment. And I like it's and a little private it. in here, but it's yep. still wide open. Yes. You can also access the walking track. That's great. Should From we here. take a look at the walking track? Sure. They're beautiful painting. So if you get a little tired, you can take a step over here and just watch people playing. And I love all the windows all the way around where you get windows. natural lighting the light in the whole is building. Fabulous. The light is fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And it's a nice view, actually, from up here. Yeah. And I got to think the gymnasium alone is probably bigger than the entire last oh, yes. senior center. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Very and if you look down there, you will see not only a lot of guys playing, but 
you'll also see there's a variety of ages. You'll have the 55-year-old oh, yeah. playing with the 75, 80-year-old. Thanks for putting on the show for us, guys. <laughs> well, we're going to go back through the fitness room. All right. Generally, you'll find at least three, four of these tables being used for card playing. Groups that come up and they can right. play cards. Now, right now, you have four guys over here playing pool. pool. These are nine-foot tables. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Hi. Well, both lights are on. These are nine-foot tables. They are high-quality tables, again, for sustainability. Are these gentlemen professionals? No. <laughs> you kind of walk over here. You're looking down on the, on the activity that's taking place in the multipurpose room also. So it's almost yeah. as though no matter where you are in the building, you look and you'll see other people and the activity taking place. So I it's, like that the way it creates a synergy. And it's separate, but you're still inclusive. Yes, exactly. Right. So we right. also have a, pick, a billiard tournament once a month. Oh, my. And that's pretty well attended for those people who are competitive. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. One of the, the uh, services that the facility offers is tax returns. So you'll see people over here t doing people, other people's tax returns here in town. That's Do you have great. to be a certain age to have your tax return done here? No. No, don't. really? Okay. okay. Any age at all. So you without having to pay to have it done. I'll be by later. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking, this room is used for craft type things. Yeah. You know, there's, there's some sewers that come in here. Um, people do Mandela painting in here. There's all sorts of crafts. And you've got plenty of storage we right here. plenty of storage, thank God. Yeah. So this right. is classroom one. We're going to take you a look into classrooms two and three. All right. And you will see there are a few people here. Twice a week, this group comes in and they play bridge. Come on in. Hello, all. We're just taking a little bit of a video, so continue with your play. Continue looking beautiful. Yes, just you can smile. Nice job. Yes. <laughs> So you can see Bridge is a pretty popular game with uh, people who live here in town, as well as uh, visitors from other communities. I see you get your ping pong table over there. Yeah, we have another ping pong table over there, which Very uh, nice. gets set up when the building isn't used. And plenty of TVs yes. for, I'm sure, for oh, yes. videos or watching. Uh, exactly. This room actually separates into two classrooms. Way over there, although not very visible right now, is a demonstration kitchen. We've had armadas come in and do a demonstration, demonstration of different meal cooking. In fact, they're coming in short in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's great. Yes, yeah. So keeping the uh, cooks busy for yeah. Armadas <laughs> until good. they can get yeah. their, new, their new building up. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. that'd be yeah. nice. Oh, so this, this is great. Yeah, so this room pretty much concludes um, the tour. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, that. So much more than was before. I mean, and don't get me wrong, they did a phenomenal job next door with yes, what they had. Yes, yes. But having space that really pays, it pays tribute to the people that, that deserve to have a, a nice adult center. Right, so, right. I never kudos. like to use the term deserve. That's, I'm not sure, and, you know, sort of like the kids going to school, did they yeah, deserve? Right, right. I mean, you know, the, the people here have paid their taxes for a long time. Um, they need more yeah, absolutely. than anything. They need social outlet. Um, once you retire, they're, you know, you don't want to spend so much time sitting in front of the television, nor should you be sitting. No offense to LCTV, but, yeah. but you know. They, I spend you, hours you, watching LCTV. I'm sure you do, but <laughs> as do I. And, and as you mentioned, it's 55 yes. and up, so yes. that's, uh, people are yeah. living longer, so you're yes. getting more and more people. Yeah, and, but, and the other thing with COVID, I think that that really became incredibly evident to everyone in the community is that our elders, who were the most uh, fragile and the most at risk for death from getting COVID, that they really need to have social outlet. And if this do building doesn't do it for them, uh, nothing right. does. I mean, if you, if you want to participate um, in any of the activities, you are more than welcome to come, introduce yourself, and it's a very welcoming place. I, realize, well, I, I just want to say thank you so much, Mary, but not only for doing this and, and showing the tour and everything, but everything you've done for the community in oh, Longmeadow and, and especially staying with this because, as I mentioned before, yeah. 
<laughs> it would have been easy to say, you know what, Seriously. I've done my time, I've done yeah. my effort. So yeah. thank you so, so much. Well, thank you, Appreciate Brian. it. Thank you. And thank great you job with everything. everything. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. And you're going to meet next yes, week. Jim, Jim Layden, who Jim is Layden, the director here. Who's yes. the director. Who? The, and I have to, s I'm going to say a word of, of kudos to him and his staff. They went from over at the old center, middle of COVID, not seeing a soul for two years, and they came here and they got slammed. And right. they have really, you know, the, even the programming is still in the process of modification and, you know, to really determine times and yep. places, et cetera, but they have done an incredible job. I think at the grand opening there were over 500 people here. Oh, that was amazing. So they went from zero people right. to 500 people at the grand opening. So they've done just an amazing well, kudos job. Kudos to everyone from you, yes. everyone, everyone who, who assisted right. from the outside, right. from the inside. Right. Right. Outstanding job. Look right. forward to talking to you. Thank Matt. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Great job. Thanks, I appreciate having uh, Mary Beth Bergeron take the time to tour the new uh, adult center here in Longmeadow. It's absolutely beautiful. If you haven't been here yet, please come by and check it out. Now I'm very happy to have my good friend Jim Layden, who is the director here at the Longmeadow Adult Center, to maybe go over some things. So Jim, first, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here. Thanks for taking the time to uh, talk about the adult center. Absolutely, well, thank you for having me. I'd be more than happy to talk about anything about the new facility. Very happy with the response since we opened to the public. Um, a lot of great people involved to kind of get us to this point. Right. And um, yeah, I think that uh, we have a lot to offer here at the center and looking forward to a very bright future. Now, Jim, when was the uh, official grand opening and everything? The official grand opening was on Thursday, November 4th. And we did our grand opening to a fantastic response from the community. I think we had about it's over... A beautiful day in beautiful November day. Too. Yeah, everything about that day really was perfect. Uh, we had a, a great lineup of speakers with you uh, included. We had our, oh, thanks for including <laughs> me. <that. laughs> uh, a lot of other community stakeholders. It uh, just was a fantastic day. Uh, everybody was very excited to see the facility. Um, and, you know, we were very... Uh, happy to finally open up right uh, it's been definitely a long-awaited project here within the town and um, yeah the day was perfect we were happy to open the doors show the facility and then the following day we actually opened it up to the public so um, yeah it was it, it was a very monumental here for the the community to finally be able to open it up and then kind of get the programs right. going after that and so how long have you been the um, the director of adult of the adult uh, care from here and as well as the uh, the old center. Yeah, I'll be coming up on my fifth year here in May. Wow. Uh, prior to my arrival here, I was the deputy director for the town of West Springfield Council on Aging and Senior Center, and I was also the program coordinator for the city of Chicopee Council on Aging and um, Senior Center as well. We well, appreciate it. And obviously, we think you've done a great job. At the old uh, mm -hmm. adult center, um, obviously, it was an old school used. Mm -hmm. It wasn't ideal for an adult center, but sometimes towns have to use what they can. Mm -hmm. What were some of the things they were looking to improve on moving over here? I like think, what was lacking over there? Yeah, I mean, it definitely was an older facility, and it wasn't intended for a senior center, but I think everybody that was involved made great use of the building to put um, a really good product together. Uh, did some great programs there. Uh, had a you know, great um, volunteer pool that helped a lot of things, food pantry-wise, just our general and services were really solid over there. But I think the building um, you know, kind of ran its course and got the yeah. most out of it. Uh, so to have a modern facility with a lot of different amenities, um, with you know, added size and just added programs in general, I think it was um, it was definitely uh, time for the new facility. And to be able to have what we currently have, it's just um, you know it's one of the best, if not the best, in the region with all the things that we have to offer. Um, but you know we did a lot of great things over at Greenwood, but it right. just was the time to um, kind of step up the facility, and here we are today. Oh, absolutely! This is. A Gorgeous. Why well, shows? Who, who do you have working for you? Who you know? Who does what around here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so I am the director of adult services. My job is to manage and oversee basically all aspects of the department. Uh, I have an assistant director of adult services, Lindsay Gill, who's um, really involved in all levels of programming and administration as well. We have an outreach coordinator, Julie Pierce. Uh, Tori Dearborn's also been helping in that role, but that outreach position is also uh, responsible for volunteer management. I have a Council on Aging clerk that helps with um, all administration for people to check in and registrations and uh, public service and answering the phones and those types of things. And then we also have a kitchen staff. We have a head cook along with two assistants that help with our meal program uh, here in the dining room. And then we also have our Meals on Wheels program. 
Uh, we have two newly added program assistants that um, cover our extended hours. So now we're open in the evening times, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Saturday now is to, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays. Oh, that's great, because I know yeah. originally you weren't open at night. You didn't have the people to keep the program. Yeah, going. we tried things over at Greenwood in the evening time. We would do some special events. And what we found out there is that the evening programs were successful based on the topics um, that we were offering. Um, the time of day, and the season, all of those things kind of fell into how we would program in the nighttime. But we found out there that the response was positive. So we wanted to add that here at the adult center. Plus, we have different features in this building now, too, because we have the gymnasium. So there's a lot of interest in activities that are a little bit later in the day while seniors so, so are still working. Who, uh, who wants to come in at night and what kind of activities go on? I would say the people that want to come in are uh, seniors that are still kind of in the workforce. So there's a lot of people that are still working until 4 or 5 o'clock p.m. and they want to be able to get here to utilize the services, whether it's the walking track, uh, the gymnasium, um, the fitness center. Uh, the pool tables or just kind of have a place to come to to hang out and socialize so adding the additional hours was the goal from the get-go we were you know able to do that over the past couple weeks response has been fantastic plus it also really opens up our ability to program now we have more time we have more space to try different things so we're pretty excited about that okay now jim most places call them senior centers the adult center we mm -hmm. talked about this before how old do you have to be to, to utilize the uh, Longmeadow Adult Center? So from 8 to 4, our normal business hours is age 55 plus. If somebody um, is under 55, if they come in with a spouse, that's fine. Do you or, card them? No, we don't. No, we kind of go by the honor system here. We haven't gotten to that point. We think everybody's very understanding about having the age um, requirements. People are, are happy to fill out the registration forms and, and give us their date of birth and their information. And then, um, you know, that's kind of how we gear our programs and activities. Can young today. people utilize anything in here or come in for any other reasons? Yeah, if, if um, a person under age 55 wanted to come in to volunteer, uh, we have those opportunities. If somebody needed food pantry services, we would offer them those um, services too. If somebody needed help with general outreach concerns, if they were under 55 and they wanted to help maybe um, a parent or mm -hmm. uh, you know, a grandparent or something like that, we would definitely be able to work with um, that age group. And you know, when we open up uh, further into our night times and weekends, we've talked about expanding the, um, our programs and services to a different age range. So we're still okay. kind of working some of that stuff out, but initially it's been 55 plus. Uh, the response has been very good. And again, it really kind of um, expands our ability to do a lot of different programs. Now, do you know, uh, are they predominantly Long Meadow residents coming here? Do you have other people from other towns coming in at all? It definitely varies. If I had to do a percentage, it's probably 70% Long Meadow, with 30% being non-residents. I think um, a lot of programs tailor to non-residents, especially if their senior center in town doesn't have certain things that we right. have to offer. So, for example, pickleball is very popular in Long Meadow. Um, it's very popular in a lot of other communities, too, that right. really has exploded over the last few years. So we do have a lot of people from outside of Long Meadow that come here to use pickleball, but they also come here to use our programs too. And that's the one thing that we try to do is have really top quality programs. So we are attracting people from other communities right. because we feel that we right. offer some diverse, diverse programs, um, different opportunities, and we're welcoming to anybody that comes. So that's kind of our philosophy when it comes to residents versus non-residents. That's good. And the reason I ask is, I remember when I first started, I was surprised going to different senior centers, adult centers, that they had people from different communities. But I also mm -hmm. realized that some didn't have the best centers in their town, so they went right. to other ones. So yeah. having a, be a new, beautiful facility probably right. doesn't hurt either, uh, attracting people here. True, true, very true. I, I think, um, you know, a credit to a lot of the older adults community nowadays is that they become savvy shoppers yeah. with senior centers, really understanding um, certain programs and things that they like at different centers. So we get a lot of people that come here specifically for lunch. What do they charge for lunch? Do you have any? Uh, we are suggested $3 donation. Okay. Um, so if somebody comes here and they like the fish here on Fridays, they might come here just for that reason. Right. And then they might bop around to another center to, because they like a certain card game. Do you there. eat here, Jim? I do. God bless yeah, you. That's yeah, great the food answer. Is excellent. Yeah, the food is excellent. We have a great kitchen staff, a great team of volunteers that kind of keep our operation going. I can't speak enough about the volunteers. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. And obviously, they're the backbone to every community. Mm -hmm. Volunteers that step up and, and use their own time so you can continue with a lot of these things that 
you wouldn't be able to afford to do Correct. if you had to pay staff. Correct. How many volunteers? Do you have any idea? Like, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we're probably around 125 active volunteers, and we've gotten a lot of new volunteers since the new adult center opened. There's definitely been a lot more interest, and we have more opportunities for people to, to help out with. You know, now that we have our cafe, uh, yeah. we're lo always looking for additional volunteers there. We have our office administration area where we've gotten a great uh, response of volunteers to help with things like answering the phones, registering people, giving tours, and those kinds of things. So, yeah, the volunteers are crucial to our success. Uh, we have a great staff, but we are somewhat limited in our size. Right. So the volunteers pick up a lot of those things that at times we don't have time for or if we have special projects for them to work on. So from our standpoint, it's a complete win-win. Oh, that's great. Now, what's the relationship between, like, a Council on Aging or Faloka? How do they work? Like, mm -hmm. do you work with them? Do you meet with them? Do they have suggestions? Or Yeah, yeah. so we work with our friends groups. Uh, we work with Faloka. Then we also work with LACCF uh, when it comes to certain programs that we would like um, sponsorship with. So we, the relationship can be two ways. We either present uh, ideas to each group about things that we uh, would like to have, a certain cost and kind of support that we need, um, or there's times where they present us with ideas of things that they would like to see and um, kind of how they would like it organized and planned. And that works well too because um, they may have ideas that we haven't thought of or we haven't tried in a while and then they're hearing it maybe in the community that oh it would be great if the adult center offered this or that so uh, another win-win relationship with those groups because um, you know the mission of you know of working together is to serve the older adult community right. and to be open-minded when it comes to the programs that we're offering and to keep them um, a low cost or no cost at all. I mean, that's the, the benefit of having your friends group is that they can supplement and support those areas where I don't have certain funds to just um, put together special events all the time. So the support, the sponsorship, you know, makes it all happen. Oh, that's great. And, and again, it kind of goes with the volunteers and groups like mm -hmm. that. It really takes everybody to have everything come together. Absolutely. And if you mentioned uh, uh, earlier, I apologize, you also have the, the veterans agent within the building. Yep. Yeah, we have the veterans director here um, in their department as well as the Board of Health has the community nurse here too. So having those extra departments uh, within this facility is fantastic for seniors that are coming in to um, you know, participate in a program with us, but at the same time they might be able to check in with the veterans director. Right about any services or possible benefits that she may be able to assist somebody. Uh, then they can also catch up with the Board of Health nurse if they wanted their blood pressure taken or if they had any questions about um, referrals or medications or things like that. So it's kind of like an, an all-inclusive little network. Yeah, it's a one-stop one yeah, shop. One -stop shop. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we take And it's kind of private over there, too. So if somebody yep. doesn't want to know, you know, people know exactly. their veteran status or if they're going to see the nurse or... Yep, there's actually separate food. entrances. Yeah. You know, so we have our main door where people where people come in and scan in, and they're kind of here to um, you know check in for their council on aging activities or programs. But if somebody wanted to go directly to um, the board of health, uh, our food pantry is also a separate entrance, and then the veterans director it yeah. kind of allows that anonymity if somebody wanted um, you know to have a, a private consultation with either department. Right. Now, You've been here a while now in the, in the new facility. Do you have any favorite parts about this or any places like this is this is really cool? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm blown away by uh, all of the facilities, the, the classrooms, the open space, the floor plans. I think it was done really well to be welcoming for all groups to participate in or see what other activities are going on that sometimes are not just always behind closed doors. I like upstairs that if you're playing pool, you can kind of look downstairs and see yeah. what's going on in the, the multi-purpose room. Um, I mean, I love the gymnasium. I think uh, head and shoulders above, that's, you know, probably... You're saying that's bigger than the entire <laughs> last uh, senior center. Yeah, I, I mean, it's fantastic. I think that's a humongous draw here. I think the nice thing about the gym is kind of how we also have it um, designed to accommodate pickleball players, yep. um, basketball players, and volleyball players, and then exercise, dance, and those kinds of things. I mean, there's so much use that you can get out of a gymnasium. And then the walk-in track is just like, I think, like the, um, the best amenity that you just really don't see at other centers in right. the area. A lot of um, centers that have a walk-in track are true community centers or other centers maybe up more towards Boston or in those areas. So when people see that walk-in track, I think that is uh, just a, a fantastic amenity where people can come in here in the wintertime to walk uh, at, any t you know, um, t at times during 
really any season to come in, yeah. socialize with a friend, walk with a friend, or walk amongst themselves. It's a great form of exercise and, um, you know, kind of walking with a partner if you wanted to. And you're right. It really is like no other adult center around here. And it kind of reminds like Springfield College has a gym with mm -hmm. walk. And it reminds me of a little smaller version of that, but it's right. beautiful, plenty of room in there. Yeah. And then added with everything else. I mean, this place is yeah, spectacular. It's great. It's great. I mean, it's just having the, um, the ability to put different kinds of activities in there. You know, I mentioned a few, again, pickleball being very popular, mm -hmm. but you know, we have a great line dancing group that has, um, you know, has used the do you gym. you dance? I do not dance. I help arrange the dances, but I don't <laughs> dance. Uh, you should. That would be great for <laughs> the people at home. The attendance for those is really good, and I want to keep yeah. it that way. So. Okay. <laughs> good point. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean the gym is great. So the multi-purpose room is is very well done. That allows us to have, um, you know, our meal program and special events. And there we can change the seating to be, um, you know, auditorium style. So yeah. the nice thing about all of the rooms here is that they're they're multifaceted. So we can can change them over. That right. we can have a board meeting in this room, but then we can also have this room for card playing yeah. or knitting. And I think that that's. Um, you know, that's a credit to the staff to kind of being open-minded with the floor plans and how you're going to flip rooms over at times. And it uh, doesn't really lock you into one activity right. for each room. You can kind of diversify it a little bit. Yeah, when we toured around, it was neat. You see all the, you know, different activities going on. And they're private, but they're also still kind of included in yep. everything else. Yep. Have you seen since, uh, obviously, opening early November, the pandemic's been up and down. Yes, it has. Have you... Um, seen growth and people coming in. I know it's only been a short time with mm -hmm. no masks or anything like that. I wonder if you've noticed any difference or if it's going to take a little while now that... Yeah, I, I think we've definitely seen a difference. In the beginning when we first opened, um, it was extremely busy here, which was a great thing. Um, getting a lot of new people registered, a lot of new faces to the building, a lot of tours and all of that stuff. So the, the response initially was overwhelming, but, but in a good way. We were able to manage it. And then when kind of um, COVID still was kind of lingering back around, and you know, obviously it still hasn't completely gone away, but then when the mask mandate came back in, I think people kind of took a step back again, yeah. understandably so. We even tweaked our programs a little bit. We, um, we ended up doing a grab and go for our meal program and we shut down the cafe just temporary, just so like that surge would kind of um, level out. And then kind of once it did and the mask mandate was dropped, uh, there's been a lot more yeah. interest here. I think people are feeling a little bit more comfortable, um, feeling uh, you know, that they're able to socialize, come in, meet their friends, have some food, play and activity. So, yeah, there, it, we never like it never completely slowed down to like a screeching halt. We saw maybe a peak and then a dip a little bit, right. but right back now, you know, we're getting a, a lot more interest from newer people in town and then outside of town. Too. Well, it's great just walking through, seeing you know different pockets of people, whether they're playing pickleball in the mm -hmm. gym, whether they're upstairs playing cards or playing pool. It was right. nice seeing the different activities and everybody socializing yeah. together. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's fantastic. We're we're pleased with it, but we've always. Um, kind of evaluate where we want to evaluate ourselves is like a year from now. Yeah. You know, because a lot of our programs that we currently have are a lot of programs that we transitioned over from the old building. And a lot of people were waiting to finally start up their card playing right. or their their social groups and those kinds of things. So we have a lot of new programs. That's what I was going to ask you. Are there any things you're waiting to lay out or are you still kind of assessing, saying, it? should we do this, should we do that? Yeah, there, there's always like um, a strategy when it comes to programming. We'll definitely try... A lot of different things based on interest level and what we think might work and then we um we try to keep um the programming to our audience but our audience is always changing as far as age groups so when you think of an older adult or a senior it's not somebody that's just 85 years old so now we have to program for 55 plus 65 to 75 75 right. to 85 and then 85 plus so you're just looking at different decades of programming that have a lot of different interests so we um we evaluate almost every program based on attendance, yeah. based on feedback, and then we continue to kind of retool our catalog like that. Um, a lot of things have transitioned over here from the old building successfully, and then some things have, um, you know, uh, have maybe dwindled a little bit because of COVID for so many different reasons. But yeah, we're always willing to try different things, and I think that that's um, the best philosophy of our center. We listen to our patrons. Uh, we don't try to get stuck with programs. Just your senior center, you should offer this. I mean, right. We will, but we might um, we might not offer it all the time just to fill a slot. Like so, there is a little bit of a, a strategy yeah. and game plan to how we program. Now, when you open um, 
like pickleball, I know they're playing in the gym right now. Is there a time or do you just wait till the weather is nicer to open the outside courts? Uh, the outdoor courts have really been open all year. Okay. Uh, so people can go in and play there. That is open to the public. So that's not uh, monitored by age range. And there's no fees for outdoor use. So as long as there's no snow on the ground or there's no real Have obstacles. you ever played pickleball? I've been pit playing a little bit and trying to figure it out a little bit more. It's a very fun game. Active. Looks like a combination ping pong, tennis, and, and uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like highlight? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. highlight. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him back. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely racquetball, racquetball, that's what I meant. There you go. Right. And I never played highlight. They're using it like a wiffle ball. Like they're using yeah. It. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of variations that kind of um, you know, combine with pickleball. I'm trying to get into it uh, slowly, um, but it, there's a really big following to it. Some of my, one of my staff persons play. Uh, a lot of people have helped us kind of come up with what works in there because yeah. the, the challenge is just not like you have the gym and you have pickleball and then everybody can go play. They can, but there's different levels of pickleball. Right. Um, and, you know, certain players want to play with certain players, which is understandable. So we have to kind of uh, be sensitive to those groups scheduling it appropriately where it gives everybody equal time. So that's been, um, continue to be a work in progress, but we've come a long way with pickleball and gymnasium use since day one to where we are now. Okay, and that's beautiful courts out there. Hopefully we can get a chance to check them out. Um, anything else uh, as we're getting into spring or is there anything new or anything uh, else you want to mention about the adult center that people maybe should know if they yeah, haven't been here? Sure, if they haven't been here, please feel free to come down at any time. Uh, you really don't need to call us. You don't need an appointment. You can come in. We can register you. What uh, are the hours here? The hours right now, since we have our extended hours, are 8 a.m. Monday through Friday to 8 p.m. Wow. And then on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So uh, anybody that hasn't been here, myself or anybody on our staff, will be able to give a tour to register a person. There's not like... A membership fee or anything like that we uh, just get some general information from people um, give them a scan card like you would use at a grocery store scan in each time you come here and then the, um, indicate what it is that you're doing that day so we have an accurate count of everybody that comes in the building so the process is very smooth it's very simple and we're as welcoming as um, you know we can be to the general public we, we want people to feel comfortable um, when they come here that there's something for them to do and then ultimately for them to keep coming back. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, I appreciate everything you've done here from, mm -hmm. from being across the, uh, on the other side of the parking lot to helping them move over here. And uh, you've been so accommodating to, to me, but to really all the seniors, uh, all the adults in, in town here. And I know it was a difficult, you know, getting this place up and running and, and getting over here. So thanks for everything you do well, and, and to you. your staff who, who do a remarkable job oh. here. And uh, I mean, you can just feel it when you walk around too, that people enjoy the presence mm -hmm. of being here. So. Appreciate taking the course, time. Appreciate you. everything you're you doing for us too. So. Oh, my pleasure, my like pleasure. A, a team, team approach. So thank you, Tim. Oh, thank you. And that concludes. This is our first episode of 2022. Finally, since our first episode of 2020, finally back out on location. So I'm thrilled to be here at the Longmeadow Adult Center. Uh, I thank Mary Beth Bergeron and Jim Layden for taking the time to to show us around the Adult Center to kind of talk about how they got to right here and all the beautiful things they hear. So. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.